B-Boy Stratus here again uh, with the windmill tutorial which was requested. So starting the windmill is probably one of the more difficult parts. What you're going to need is flexibility and a hand glide freeze. That's really all you need to start the windmill. As you can see, um, stretching before I start. You should always stretch before breakdancing or tricking. For this, primarily, you just need splits flexibility. Hand glide freeze, some people call this a turtle freeze, whatever. You want to be able to hold it comfortably on two hands. Uh, you're going to stab a little bit to the side. Don't stab straight in the center of your abs, it's going to feel really strange. Um, try going into basic freeze, and then just kind of lowering your legs. And that's about where your elbow should be stabbing. It's really pretty simple. Now the most crucial part of your windmill is going to be the collapse. And we're going to split it into three parts. Here's the drop. The drop is the first, well, it's the first of two parts that you need. Basically you're just going to start from your hand glide freeze and you're going to drop onto your shoulder. You want to go from your hand to your forearm to your shoulder. It's a very simple motion. Hand forearm, shoulder. And you want to be on your upper shoulders. Don't roll onto your back. If you roll onto your back, if your hip hurts or your lower back hurts, you're doing it wrong. Get onto your shoulders. The collapse is pretty much the most crucial part of your entire windmill. It's going to determine how much momentum you retain and how much power you start with. When you collapse, with your drop, you're going to want to kind of dig your elbow into the ground. As you can see with my collapses, it kind of digs inward to create a smooth surface for your collapse. If you need more tips, um, check out my coin drop tutorial. I have a lot more on the collapse. But again, just make sure it's smooth and you get on your shoulders. Next part is the spin. The spin is where you're going to get your rotation for the windmill. And it's actually really important. It's also very easy. Basically, just start in your hand glide. Move your wrist so that your fingers are pointing behind you. And then use your right hand to pull you around so that they're facing in front of you. This is where your initial spin is going to be if you're starting from the ground. Again, it's very simple. All you have to do is kind of drag the ground with your supporting arm, and you'll spin. You really don't need that much rotation. At most, get like 180 degrees, and you're fine. Combining the drop and the spin gives you the collapse. And basically, you'll want to spin a little bit and then drop right afterward. The motion that your legs make should feel totally natural. And this is really easy. <laughs> you just collapse and pretty much you should feel that. Now the swing is not a kick. It is not a kick. It's just your hips rotating and it's primarily actually upper body. What you're going to want to do is pull your body up a little bit before you collapse. And this is going to get you the power that you need for your swing. You don't need to get that high up, just a little hop to get you some gravitational potential energy, and then you can collapse. And then I'll give you all the power that you need for windmills. <laughs> now when you put these th three things together, basically what you get is a windmill. And you want to lean to your right shoulder and stab again for your second windmill. When you first start them, you might drag your leg on the ground a little bit. That's fine. Just don't depend on it too much and don't get used to it. Also, don't call those windmills because I will be very angry. They're not. As you practice more and more, basically drill this move, you'll be able to windmill back into hand glide. 
And from there, if you're comfortable with it, you'll be able to collapse again. Very simple. Again, just kind of showing the motion. As you lean to your shoulder, you're going to go into your right forearm and then stab with your left. This is for uh, counterclockwise, by the way. Sorry I didn't mention that earlier. If you're learning it the other way, just reverse everything. Um, it helps a lot of people to learn it on their head. I would personally actually recommend it. That's not how I learned it, but it's, it's going to help you in the long run. So, multi-mills. Actually, multiple windmills. Or what I would actually call windmills. You want to have a really comfortable hand glide freeze. If you can do it with one hand, even better. You want to be sure you have control over it, along with your collapse. Again, I cannot stress how important your collapse is. It is where all of your power comes from and how you maintain momentum between your windmills. If you don't have a solid collapse, you're not going to be able to do multiple windmills. So remember, hand, forearm, shoulder, shoulder, right hand, back to your stab. And basically as you do multiple windmills, it's just going to cycle through them over and over. Now, over time, you're going to want to progress your windmills from stabbing windmills to forearm windmills. And um, I actually do a strange variation, but I'll show you what I mean. These are stabbed windmills. And these are windmills on basically my palms without stabbing. And what it does is it allows you to chain them much faster, which will allow you to not lose any momentum, basically, between your windmills and it allows for easier progression and evolution into barrel mills and nutcrackers. Also again, it's a swing, not a kick, but you kind of want to imagine bringing your legs as close to your head as possible. So you want to, as you swing, you want to pull your right leg toward your head and then your left leg toward your head as you're coming around your right shoulder. Again, you want to be behind your shoulders. Do not let your hips or your lower back touch the ground at any point during your windmill. Otherwise, you will hurt yourself. So, stab. Palm, forearm, shoulder, shoulder. Now, the coin drop is not usually included in windmill tutorials, but I think that it's essential. Um... Go look at my coin drop tutorial. I'll post an annotation here. And it's really going to get you a lot more power, as you can see. Um, it makes windmills a lot easier, and especially multiple windmills. Plus, it's just impractical to start from the ground. Now, again, even as you're beginning, you're going to want to think about this progression from stabbing to your palms to your forearms. And those were with my palms. And I can't do farm mills anymore. Like, I just switched them to barrels. And uh, this entire video was done in one take, two takes, or two videos. So I was really tired, and my barrels look like crap. But there are some better ones later, I hope, if you guys are lucky. But yeah, think about that progression. Always think about that progression. Do not ever become too dependent on stabbed windmills. Key notes. Basically, the collapse is the most important thing in your windmill. It really is. <laughs> so remember, dig your shoulder, dig your fore elbow. I do not know what part of my arm I'm talking about. Dig your elbow into the ground. And make sure you... Try to stay on your stab for the least amount of time possible. And also try to get your leg as close to the ground as possible. It's going to sound kind of strange, but what you want to do is you want to get your legs as wide as possible. And to do that, you're going to want to sweep as close to the ground as possible. Your other leg is going to be trying to kick your head. So whichever shoulder you're on, 
that foot is going to be kicking toward your head. Or whichever shoulder you're on, that foot is going to be sweeping the ground. The opposite foot is going to be kicking toward your head. I'm just showing um, different power chains that you can do from windmills. Obviously, flare, crickets, dark hammers, halos, whatever you want to do. Here are my really crappy windmills. And here's a slowdown of head, wind head mills, I guess. And here are some really bad barrels. So again, all of this progression basically comes from the way that you kick and the way that you collapse. I'm sorry, swing. <laughs> and um, of course, if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, whatever you'd like. Um, I'm probably going to redo this at some point just because this is kind of rushed. Um, and my windmills look like crap. So probably sometime within the next few weeks you'll get a better looking one, hopefully. If you guys harass me enough, I definitely will. Um, again, focus on your collapse. It is very important. And the less time you spend on your stab, the better. Always stretch. Keep your legs wide. Um, you don't... I mean... Okay, this is going to be a tangent, and you're going to have another black screen. Um, anybody who got what they need, you can leave. <laughs> um, you don't need to keep your legs totally straight throughout the entire windmill. People, some people are going to hate me for this, especially like gymnasts. But it is not that important to keep your legs straight. Don't keep them like half crunched. But if they're straight enough, your mills will look fine. They'll chain fine. And... I don't know, just some people, like, have a lot of trouble keeping their legs straight, and I'm just telling you, it's not that big of a deal. The more you practice it, the straighter they're going to get, but you you don't need gymnast windmills unless you're in gymnastics, in, case, in which case you should never be looking at a tutorial from a b-boy or a tricker. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. And that is it.